we just wanted to take a minute, Governor, and show you some slides of some of the stuff that was, that's going on. We're not going to be able to get out and see it all. So. All right, sorry. We'll, we'll try and make this really short. Yes, I'll make it really. We want to get out and see the real yeah. stuff. Let's let's get in the lights real quick. Should be down there. So. <laughs> Peter's trying to ignore me. Okay, what this is? This is by the town of Joseph. This is what the river normally looks like. Okay, and this is what it looks like now from the last week. Um, and so you can see where the normal channel is right here as they're walking away. This is the normal channel, and it's everywhere but the normal channel. Sheriff, let me ask you this question. This has been a common issue. We know there's a lot more water. The question is, from a lot of people, is the channel would have taken the water if it had been cleaned up, scarfed out. Uh, in some areas, we have a lot of sediment mm -hmm. that's well, over years and years is filling up the, uh, the bottom, and consequently, what used to hold this much only holds this much now, and makes for a more acute flooding situation. Is that any the, the truth to that down here? There, some of it does <clears throat> in certain places. Since 2005, and I'll show you a slide here in a minute um, of where we've actually done a lot of mitigation work in our work weak areas, trying to improve that. Um, so they're building sand traps so they can clean those out. In fact, we can show you places where they've been ripping trees out, trying to keep it clean. Uh, the issue we're running into is the banks are starting to give away. You get this much water after so long, it just chews it away. With saturation and debris knocking into exactly. it. Exactly. The, the, the water came up high and it set up that high level for over a month. And when it gets pounded and pounded and pounded, it. Uh, so for the most part, yes, we do have some of the areas like that. Uh, issues like in private fields, the smaller canals. And that's where we run into a lot of that. So that water can't get moved down as quick as we'd like it. You know, like Mr. Comiskey's field, that's last year we had, was it last year or two years ago? Oh, it was two years ago. Two years ago, ago we had the same thing. You know, what, it was just plugging up and running down, but they cleaned out some of it. So this year, well, it's so, down. Well, since then, the uh, uh, federal government funded a project that riprap part of the river banks, which, uh, stabilized a lot of the central area. This is normally what it looks like in that area. Yeah. Normal seasons. Um, this is never for rain. That's been, uh, these roads have been shut down for almost a full. We know we're going to have high water. We would get in and do the work. And we avert all of the emergency uh, cost and spending by doing the work up front. Mm -hmm. uh, the way the system is, uh, or has been, the problem with getting funding is you have to have a flood. You have to have problems before you can get the funding. How are you doing, Stan? Please meet you. Please meet you. You just have some lady over here. How are you? Yeah. Underwater. You're an underwater gang, huh? You understand your water's actually been high. Now, on May 23rd, you'd be interested to know, on May 23rd, our reservoirs statewide were at their lowest levels in history. Right. In anticipation of the water coming down, we need to have capacity, and we're trying to push as much through as we can without causing flooding by pushing through too fast. Right. It really is what is the right balance. And it, and it does take that. But if you got 180% of your snow melt and your reservoirs will only hold so much, you, you can calculate, can you calculate how long it would take to fill that reservoir and everything over that? So maybe we need them lower than lower. Well, again, I'm mean, that, that. You know, I mean, it, it's it's a matter of semantics, but. It's, but it's, I can but tell you, one guy said to me when, when we did this and lowered the reservoirs, we wanted to make sure that we were right. Because if we were wrong, then you got this. And, 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 and you come and say, you mean you let the water out of our reservoir? <laughs>
Governor, while we're getting ready here, cities like Perth and, and Las Vegas would love to have this kind of a problem. So at what point does it become a water management problem than, uh, than uh, flooding? Well, you can always have too much of a good thing, I guess. That's the example. We need water. Uh, we live in an arid state, and so we try to control and manage the water as best we can. And we have a lot of it right now, and it's, uh, it's a management problem. It's not like we can't use it, but having it all at once makes it pretty difficult to manage. And uh, we're finding that the flooding is having a negative impact on our farming, agriculture, uh, our structural uh, buildings out there. So it's, it's really a challenge to manage uh, too much, just like it's a challenge to manage too little. If we have a 10-year energy plan, should we have a 10-year uh, water management plan? You know, we actually do have a, a, a management plan for water. We've been working on it for many years. We'll reevaluate that now in light of the flooding of this year. But uh, our water conservation efforts of slow the flow, save H2O, is designed for us to, to maximize the use of limited resource water. We live in an arid state, so that's part of management. Uh, we also built reservoirs. Uh, part of the Central Utah Water Project was designed to hold water higher up and so we can control the release of it for when we need it later in, in the summer years and, and uh, late summer for agricultural purposes. So uh, part of what we do to manage is build reservoirs. Uh, unfortunately for us, the federal government is kind of getting out of the reservoir building business, and so they don't partner with states like they've done in the past, and so we, we have to look now to the future with our own resources. It's a challenge when you have too much of a good thing. And, and we're learning from our past uh, efforts. We're going to learn from this effort here, and we'll be better prepared as we go forward. I appreciate the initiative we've seen here with many people uh, taking uh, action in their own homes, filling sandbags, stacking sandbags.